I have some absolutely huge news for the GPU market. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Alright, so I have a couple of absolutely huge pieces of news I want to go over today in this video, and that first piece of news that I want to go over actually involves Intel and their upcoming Intel Arc GPUs. Now, this is absolutely huge for the GPU market because it looks like some GPU benchmark were finally released online. They were found over on Twitter by the Twitter user Tom Apisak. He found some Sysopt Sandra uh, benchmarks that compare it to the RTX 3070 Ti and it's actually looking really really good and in fact in some cases this is looking even better than I was expecting out of this top tier GPU. Now this GPU that we're speaking about is the 512 execution unit version of Intel's upcoming ARC GPUs which means that yes it is the big boy, it's the baddest of the baddest that Intel has to show off and yes yeah, once again, this is looking really good. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you can see here, we can see that, yes, this is indeed the 512 execution unit version, and it does get up to 2.1 gigahertz for the max speed. At least that's what it appears to be. Potentially, it could get even higher with overclocking. We'll just have to wait and see. And in fact, that's something I'm very excited to see. You know, just how well are these things going to react to some extra power and some extra voltage. But that's just something we'll have to find out when it launches, hopefully still in quarter one, but potentially as late as quarter two of 2022 but now if we take a look at the actual benchmarks which show it competing against the RTX 3070 Ti here's where things get very very interesting and this is where I'm going to want to talk about things quite a bit so we can see here that in terms of the local rank that this Intel Arc GPU actually gets 941 which compared to the RTX 3070 Ti that actually only got 1153 so we can see here that it's actually ranking higher than the RTX 3070 Ti some very impressive stuff now in terms of the actual score we can see here it gets 9017.52 megapixels per second compared to the RTX 3070 Ti's 8369.51 megapixels per second which means that yes once again the RTX 3070 Ti is getting beat by Intel's GPU very very impressive stuff but if we break it down here a little bit further I think this tells us a better story of what the RTX 3070 Ti is going to look like when compared to this new Intel GPU GPU and it gets very interesting. So if we take a look here at the half float GP compute, we can see that the RTX 3070 Ti is actually outperforming the Intel GPU because the Intel GPU gets 35,093.25 megapixels per second compared to the 36,510 megapixels per second out of the 3070 Ti. So it gets a little bit outperformed there. And when we take a look at the single float GP compute, we can see that the RTX 3070 Ti once again is faster and actually significantly this time as the uh, Intel Arc GPU is getting around 20,888 megapixels per second compared to the 27,029 megapixels per second out of the 3070 Ti. And honestly, guys, I think this is very interesting stuff here because the half compute and single compute, I think, are going to be more relevant for gaming performance. So I wouldn't be too surprised if you do see the RTX 3070 Ti more often than not, at least according to just this one benchmark, which, of course, we're going to have to wait for more benchmarks to get a more full image of what this is going to look like but just based off of this benchmark yeah I wouldn't be too surprised if the 3070 Ti in gaming is just a little bit faster than this new Intel Arc GPU at least with these early unreleased drivers so we'll have to wait and see maybe Intel can get even more performance out of this before it releases but now here's where things get very interesting indeed because if we take a look at the double precision performance we can see that it actually gets about a thousand megapixels per second compared to 594 on the RTX 3070 Ti so it's absolutely crushing it there and it absolutely absolutely demolishes it in the quad float GPU compute because it here gets 109.46 megapixels per second compared to the 22.47 on the 
RTX 3070 Ti. So yeah, absolutely crushes it there. And honestly, this is the type of stuff where you might imagine that maybe some professional work would come into application here. So with that in mind, I think the Intel Arc GPU is going to be an absolute monster when it comes to professional work, at least again, according to this one benchmark, it should probably be trading blows with something like an RTX 3070 and potentially even an RTX 3070 Ti, depending upon what the final performance is going to be with the final release drivers, as well as the final release clocks, as those could potentially get a little bit better. But overall, yeah, this GPU is looking absolutely, definitely very incredible. It's looking a little bit better, actually, in fact, than I was expecting, especially considering that it's actually not even fully out yet, and there is still a little bit of time to tweak the performance, especially on the driver side when it comes to this graphics card. And so I think this thing is actually going to be very, very impressive. I cannot wait until Intel releases their new upcoming GPUs because, guys, I think we need to talk about the fact that we absolutely need a third competitor in this space. I mean, honestly, I know at least for me, I'm definitely sick and tired of all the abuse we've been getting from AMD and NVIDIA as it seems like these two companies are not only not really interested in competing with each other in terms of price anymore, but on top of that, it seems like that just at every single turn, both of these companies are doing absolutely everything they can to do every little, you know, just sinister cash grab type of move they possibly can. I mean, the recently released RX 6500 XT and the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte are just another proof of that idea that I believe that, yeah, these companies just don't care about their customers whatsoever anymore. At least on the surface, it kind of can appear that way sometimes when they release products like these that are just so anti-consumer. So I think we definitely need a third competitor to step back in and get these guys back into the companies that they used to be, back into these aggressive companies that used to really fight tooth and nail and give the customers what they wanted and give massive performance increases at reasonable prices. And I think if Intel comes in here with the right pricing and the right performance on their graphics cards, they can once again, at least in the entry to mid-level uh, this generation, try and start to push these companies back into what they used to be and get some competition back into the market so we can see the NVIDIA and AMD that we always used to love as well as a brand new competitor coming in with Intel and their brand new Intel Arc GPUs. But now let's go ahead and talk about the second story and this is once again another story about Intel. They've got a lot going on right now. Looks like actually according to videocards.com, Intel is going to be investing $20 billion into two new fabs in the Midwest. Now this is absolutely huge for the PC gaming market as this is just going to mean that more silicon can finally make your way into your home once these fabs do come online. Now if you want some more information about this, uh, according to videocards.com, here's what they had to say, quote, planning for the first two factories will start immediately with construction expected to begin late in 2022. Production is expected to come online in 2025 when the fab will deliver chips using the industry's most advanced transistor technologies. So yeah, this isn't going to necessarily be coming online overnight, but either way, this is definitely great news for gamers as it looks like finally we have some companies starting to look forward and deciding to actually finally see that yes, in the future, there's just going to be more and more demand. They're going to need more and more silicon. So they're starting to lay the plans now that in the future should help us avoid another massive chip shortage, especially if, you know, the whole cryptocurrency mining thing does die down and continues to stay uh, not as popular. That should also help things quite a bit as well. So yeah, with these companies going ahead and planning for the future, this is only going to be good news for gamers and hopefully this will allow Intel to finally meet demand on all their products, not just the Intel CPUs, which they do seem to be doing actually a pretty good job of, but also some GPUs so that again, in the future, we won't have to live through this absolute nightmare ever again. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think Intel's new GPU is really going to be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.